Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday to you guys. I pray you all received sweet sleep last night, woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this new day. It is a day that we have never seen before, a day we will never ever see again, but it is the day, <clears throat> excuse me, that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because he's good. Why? Because he's great. Why? Because he's grand. Why? Because he's just God. He's sovereign. He's the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel. He is whatever we need him to be, whenever we need him to be. it. And that is so reassuring. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of what we started last week and on yesterday, facing the monster within. And we are on part six, facing the monster within part six. And so yesterday we started talking about your words, your words, that you have to be aware of the power of your words. You know, you have exactly what you say. And the first thing, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. And the first thing that we said yesterday, your words give you the ability to have what you say. And we went over the account with Jesus and the fig tree and how Jesus is powerful. Jesus was aware of the power of his words. You know, he wasn't shocked. He wasn't amazed, you know, that the fig tree was cursed. He understood the power of his words. And so you've got to remember the power of your words. And so today I promised you we would pick up with number two. And number two, <clears throat> excuse me, is your words give you the ability to stop living under the lie. You know, those words that were spoken over you that weren't true, but because they came from someone that you held in high esteem, those words still affect you today with well, the power of your words. They give you the ability to stop living under that lie. Proverbs 12, 18 in the easy reading version says it like this. It says, speak without thinking and your words can cut like a knife. Be wise and your words can heal. And so you've got to be wise about the words that you choose to take in. You've got to be wise about the words that you choose to speak because the words that you speak, when you speak with wisdom, those words words will heal. I'm going to say that again. When you speak over yourself with words of wisdom, that would have to mean you're saying the words that, the, that God has already said. Those words, when you speak those words with wisdom, those words will heal. And so you've got to be mindful about what you say about yourself. Remember, it's not about what someone else says. It's about what you say. Remember, we talked about Jalen Brown on on yesterday, he did not let the words of a teacher, the words that were derogatory, he did not take those words in, but he used those words to motivate him, to give him momentum, to prove that is not who I am, that I am who I say I am. And so this morning, I need you to switch your brain and understand your words matter about what you say about you. It's not about what somebody else said, but it's about what do you say? about you. And so Psalm 141.3, NIV version, <clears throat> set a guard over my mouth, Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. And so sometimes we need assistance in this thing. We need God to help us because we are so used to saying certain things. You know, we say stuff like, oh my God, you're killing me. Knowing that that's just a cliche, it's just a saying, but it's still you're releasing words into the atmosphere. It is a spiritual law. You have what you say. And so you can't get caught up in cliches and, you know, little pop popular sayings for the time, you've got to remember your words matter. So you can't speak those words. Psalm 1914, easy reading version says, may my words and thoughts 
please you. Lord, you are my rock, the one who rescues me. And so you've got to understand the words that you speak have got to be positive. The words you speak have got to be pleasing unto the Lord. The King James, <clears throat> King James Version says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And so we want to speak words that will make God smile when he thinks about us. We want to speak words that are pleasing. We want to line up to what God said. We want to come into full agreement, right? Of what God said. We want to speak those words. Remember, the story of Joseph, and I, I love Joseph's account because you can get so much out of it. But remember Potiphar's wife, remember she spoke a lot over Joseph. Remember she wanted, she said that he tried to, um, to rape her and, you know, she was saying bad things about Joseph and everybody had good things to say about him. Um, but that lie that she told about Joseph led to his promotion. Pastor G, what are you talking about? Joseph went to jail. Yes, he did, but he was still in charge there. Wherever he was, he still had the favor of God. And so I'm saying to you, may every lie that has been spoken over you, may it increase you the more. May you know you not have any faults be fault be found, uh, may you be found faultless based on the lie that has been spoken over you. Although Joseph went through some things, it came out that, you know, that's not who he was. And so understand this, just because a lie has been spoken over your life, it does not mean that you're going to stay in that place. It does not mean that that's who you are. In fact, some lies can promote you to the next step. Remember, it made Joseph stronger. Of course, he didn't like being in jail, but it listen, he got elevated. When you read the story, remember, he told the dreams, all of that. If you go back to Joseph, that's not where I am today, but go back and read it. So number two, your words give you the ability to stop living under the lie. You get to make a decision on what you're going to live under. And you make the decision today to no longer live over the lie because the words you speak over yourself can get you from up under that lie. Number three, your words give you the ability to frame your world with the words. Remember back in Genesis, right? When the world was got started, it was dark. It was void. There was nothing there. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He right then and there, God framed the world with words. And you can do the same thing. You know, if you read down in that chapter, Genesis 1, 26, it says that we are made in his image and he has given us the authority and the power to do what he does to have dominion you know to subdue a thing until he comes and so you've got to understand that maybe I don't like the way my life is right now you can change it with your words you can speak and make the difference you can change the atmosphere it does not have to stay that way if God can say to darkness let there be light and there is light you can say to sorrow let there be joy and and begin to rejoice. Remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It all matters what you say. You can speak a word and you can change the atmosphere. Hebrews 11, 3, and I'm reading it out of the easy English. So it's easy, E-A-S-Y. It says, because of faith, we understand about how God made the universe. He spoke his word to make it happen. In, in that way, God made all the things that we can see. He made them from things that nobody could see. The Passion Translation says it like this. Faith empowers us to see the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's words. He spoke and the invisible realm um, gave birth to all that is seen. Now get this, since the worlds were the world, I'm sorry, were framed by God's word, the world can only be determined by words. I'm going to say that again. Since the world um were framed since the worlds were framed by God's word, the world can only be determined by words. You can frame your world by a word. Your salvation, remember, gives 
you access to the power of God. Remember, we talked about that. When you are aware of the power of your salvation, it gets, gives you access to the power of God, the presence of God, and the plan of God. And so your salvation, remember, it gives you access to the power of God. The power of God is in his word. The Bible was spoken to be written and written to be spoken. I'm going to say that again. The power of God is in his word. The Bible was spoken to be written and written to be spoken. So I need you to understand that your tongue is the most important part of your body because it speaks for your heart. It may be small, but it's a powerful muscle. Remember, James 3, 5 says, even though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts wildly. Think about this. A small flame can set a whole forest on fire. And so you've got to be mindful of the power of your tongue. It is how you speak words. It is how you speak life. And you've got to guard that thing. Remember, we just went over scripture. God, help me guard the, the, the door of my lips. Let me say the right things. Let's close this out with 2 Corinthians 4.13. And read it in a message um, version. It says, we're not keeping this thing quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believe it, so I said it. We say what we believe. And so we only speak words that line up with the word of God. We speak what we believe. So I determine that the, uh, I determine the outcome of my life. It doesn't matter what was spoken over me as a child. It doesn't matter what was spoken over me as an adult, a young adult, or even in the age that I am presently in. It does not matter what matters is what do I say about my situation? What do I say about myself? What do I say about my circumstance? Remember, I am not what happened to me. I want you to say that. I am not what happened to me, but I am who I say I am. Make sure that when you speak life over yourself, you decide that you are an overcomer. You decide that you are a survivor. You decide that you are a difference maker. You are victorious. You are who God says you are. You are rising up and you are learning that God loves you. So it does not matter what was spoken over you. I want you to get this. It does not matter what was spoken over you. You've got to switch your brain and you've got to start saying what God says. You determine who you are. You determine how your life will be. You get to use your words. Those words give you the ability ability to not live under the lie any longer. Those words give you the ability to frame your own life. Your words give you the ability to have what you say. And so you've got to take authority. You've got to be aware of the power of your words. And so now in understanding this, in facing this monster within, I've got to be aware of the power of my salvation. Remember that salvation gets me in the, gives me access to the power of God, the presence of God, and the plan of God. I've got to be aware of the power of my thoughts. Remember those thoughts, they give me the ability to jump from the old to the new. They give me the ability to switch my brain. Oh my goodness. And it gives me the ability to take hold of my thoughts bring them captive, you know, call them in, captivate those things, slam it down to the ground and make it obey the word of God. And then I've got to be aware of the power of my words that gives me the ability to have what I say, to no longer live under the lie and to frame my world with my words. Amen. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. Facing this monster within part six. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, godwantsmewhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole 
and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow as we continue on in this thing, facing the monster within. We'll be talking about being aware of the power of your do. Amen. See you in the morning.